record button and turn on the live transcript and share my notes so that we can see those. So we had a, there's a, I don't know if David Wheeler will be able to make it today, but he and I had a good conversation um, about another topic uh, that I'll add uh, just uh, So the first the first uh, item from last time was to talk about uh, the OSSF OSS I I always want to put an extra S in there OSSF uh, scorecard and dashboard summary and what we would like to see in a risk metrics model so metrics models are uh, groupings of existing chaos metrics in a single view so that you can get that perspective on on risk metrics and so one question is what would if we were to put together a sort of a panel of the key things that people look at when they're looking at risk a metric model if you will what would be the metrics that we would include in that all right david's here uh oh you noticed me i was trying to sneak in well <laughs> because i think i think um something happens where you pop up as as the host oh okay All so right, basically for I'm, fa I'm failing to sneak in yeah so i i hear you're, you're talking about uh dash scorecards and dashboards and so on right so, yes and, keep, continue please and so just to um i'm going to go back to the list but i'll also share this link um these are the the ones in green are the ones that we've already released and i'll put this in chat so that people can browse that while i take notes over in the minutes um, these are the metrics that uh, we have released that address various aspects of risk and it's we're not constrained by the metrics that we've already created when we think about what what we would want in a in a risk dashboard and i think that i know david and that's why i was hoping you'd be here there is also a dashboard effort underway within ossf and i don't know if there's a screenshot or a design for that that we might look at um okay okay i i know about the open um the open ssf uh security uh Dashboard work. You're saying there's another group? No, 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 no. It's the I'm I'm asking if there is um, like a screenshot that we could look at for that that OSSF dashboard. No, that has not been created yet. I mean, you we can show the uh, prototype. That, um, that would be. I mean, a pro, like we're not looking to. Yeah, prototype would be great because okay. I think it would. I mean, frankly, all right. Let me. Uh, I, I I can do you better because I can actually link you, you to the website. All right. So you had mentioned something else that you were going to uh, bring up. Uh, yeah, the the chaos list. Uh, yeah. So I put the chaos the, the list of metrics that we have released. Yes. under chaos which is right. that can, can I, you throw that link in the uh, list on the notes for today okay. i want to make sure that that actually gets into the thoughts document so we actually have like bi-directional communication here yeah okay the um now if you if you want if you don't mind me uh stealing your screen for a moment i can no i can walk it's through the prototype would that be would yeah. that be of some value i think so all righty so let's see here so what you just shared in the chat is the chaos list right right that's right all right chaos list so here's what i'm going to do I, i'm all about trying to make sure that people can find the data oh, so not only well, am i going to copy kind of... that okay so mary mary blessing just to give you a little bit of context the open uh -huh. ssf part of the linux foundation is actively working on security topics and those are they overlap to some extent with the work that we're doing in risk and so david's going to share some of the work of that um project within the linux foundation 
Okay. So, oh, and I see Kate too. Hi, Kate. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boy, I, I'm I'm just uh, Mary bless and blessing. Your your screen is very dark. So <laughs> this that uh, I don't know what that background is. She's in the green. She's in the green room at Jimmy Kimmel. She's doing a oh. chaos talk. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I'm huh? kidding. Oh, you're kidding. No, I, yeah. I, I believe that. I, you know, carry forth. Mary right, Blessing, so, do you know who Jimmy Kimmel is? He's a late night talk show host that does comedy in uh, the U.S. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just, yeah, I don't know if I've met, I, I, I just noticed you because uh, most of you are, are, are I, I recognize you from many times, but Mary Blessing and Renisha, I don't think I do. So it's a pleasure to meet you. First you've met all. you've met Renisha before. She's I've, at it. She's at Indeed. Oh, um, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, now that you have revealed your face, I do recognize yeah, you. Yeah. Mary, I, Mary Blessing, I don't think I have. So a pleasure to meet you. And if I've met you before, pleasure to meet you again. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. This is my first time meeting you as a... Okay, well, it's uh, it's an experience. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Da so, the David Wheeler experience is actually. David <laughs> Disney yeah, World is working on that uh, part of the park right now. Uh, yeah, that, I think, <laughs> isn't that the condemned part of the park? <laughs> no, no, no. It's the new part. It's, oh, the new park. It's okay. taken so over I'm, for I, Epcot. All right. While I'm stalling, I think I have managed to uh, find the share my screen button. Uh, so good. ignore the eight gazillion windows and tabs and other nonsense. Um, okay, so what you're seeing here is a prototype. This is not a final work, but yeah. let me give you the context here. Uh, OpenSSF has various projects to try to get some metrics about open source software with the goal of helping well, at least two groups of people. One is I'm thinking about bringing this open source software, should I? And the other is, I've already got this open source software in my stack somewhere. Should I worry? <laughs> okay. So um, now uh, we already have a project called Scorecards that tries right. to do a, a quick, you know, zero through 10 estimation. Mm -hmm. But, um, and so if, if you just want the push the button, get the instant metric estimation. Yeah, it's only an estimate, but it's an estimate. It's but, also not visual. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, zero to 10. I mean, you've got a yeah, slider, yeah. right? <laughs> so the, the, the goal of scorecards is to make it super easy for people who just need, I need a number, okay? But I think there's a number of folks who, I'm not interested in doing the five hour or 20 hour deep dive, deeper dive for analysis or a month long, uh, but I'd like something more than a number Okay, so what you're seeing right here is a prototype of what's called open source security metrics. Okay, uh, it's a project of one of the open SSF working groups. And um, what I'm getting, what you see in the first screen is, hey, what do you want to know about? And then you type stuff in. Okay, and then you can type in various searches. For simplicity, I'm going to click on one that I already know about that I know exists, namely Kubernetes which will basically just make a request for that particular package URL. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Quick, yes. quick right question. Right now, oh, well, uh, it's not gonna be we, so we a, quick. We have but... a quick question, we have a quick question. Are all of the metrics, uh, I guess the security metrics that could be searched for in that box, they are part of the scorecard? Or is this scorecard a subset? Like the scorecard is a one? subset of this. Okay. Right. So, so basically, scorecard, scorecard is its own thing. Scorecard is a separate project. Dashboard is an effort to combine various data sources, including scorecards, including best practices, including what something called criticality, which really focuses on you know how busy it is, uh, and you know it's just some other data, um, as well as for example, if there's a known security review, we pull that in too. Okay, so this is the. You know, scorecards is the, I need an answer and I want it in less than 30 seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dashboard is the, I want a little more detail. I have five to, to five minutes to 30 minutes. I don't have, you know, five years. <laughs> okay. So a little bit of a deep dive, but not too much. And this is primarily because of scaling, uh, you know, if you only used one open source software project and it was super critical to your business, you could no doubt really go deep. 
but most projects use a lot, most organizations use a lot more than one open source software project. <laughs> so, you know, how do we get a little more detail than what Scorecards does? Scorecards does the quick, quick, quick analysis. It's great for that. Um, and, you know, works on anything on GitHub. We're hoping to eventually expand it beyond GitHub. But this is the slightly deeper dive. Okay. Yeah. Con- if, if I set the context. So, you know, the, the, the challenge, a lot of people get confused between scorecards and dashboard because in some sense, they're kind of tackling the similar problem, but with a slightly different goal in mind. Okay. And dashboard in- loads in the current draft one loads in, um, scorecards as a key data source and i would expect the final one to do that so this is a prototype it's not the not the final thing but basically you enter in a package url or or a name and it tells you a little bit about it you know what is this thing well uh, it, kubernetes is an open source project here's their standard description license um, this particular project, we, we don't know of any security reviews. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just don't, means that we and our data set don't have one. Uh, we actually have a related project called Security Reviews, which is basically a database of every security review of an open source software project we can find. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. Um, so if, if, we, if we knew of one, it would be there. And then it basically tries to grab some numbers and some other data with the goal here of trying to give, you know, uh, some of the key data points more than just a number, but not too deep. And that's going to be really the argument for dashboard is how do we provide some enough data to be interesting, but not overwhelm people. And by risk, we're really looking at the security risk of this thing. That's what openness stuff is. Although, you know, Sustainment risks are also relevant long term because if a project doesn't sustain, sooner or later it's going to be your security problem. So can I ask a question, David? Oh, I bet you can. So, so this this clearly is useful for folks who are familiar with open source. Mm-hmm. Um, when I talk with, uh, for example, funders who are looking at uh, funding critical infrastructure projects and organizations that are not technology companies but use a lot of open source and want to understand these these properties of the things in their world there's a a lower level of context and understanding about what all of these things mean and i'm i'm wondering if it it actually depends on who you're talking to but but carry on yes yes, of course yes of course it does yeah um could there you know one suggestion i would has have is if uh behind each of these uh colored bars there could be a context or a, an explanation of what it is that that this represents and how open source companies or open source professionals yeah. um, interpret it. And, and I think what, that's a great what it, yeah. what it indicates for them, because I, I really yeah. am coming to yep. see that that audience is becoming a bigger part of the world. I, I, I think that's fair. I'm sorry. You go ahead. Sophia. I was going to say the same thing, actually, Sean. <laughs> oh, OK, <laughs> awesome. Inter- in the scorecard metric, you can go to the scorecard repository and see how everything is defined. It doesn't quite have the next level of contextual details, but you can find how all these numbers are calculated. Where in this, I think I, I wouldn't want to mess up the UI. So either it's a hover over or you have a documentation a page. And then if you do that, then you can build on the contextual component. So I didn't know what the plan was for how. Yeah, how so there, there is a hover over a little bit. It's not to the depth I think you want, but, but okay. Mm-hmm. Vulnerability it's, reporting. It means it's not, the project. Like I, it's not what I want. It's it's just, I think the audience for this kind of thing is is becoming a group that is just not as familiar with open source in general. Right. Um. I, I, I um, Oh, I see that. This, this is a Sorry, prototype. Uh, as no, a, no, no, no. This, this isn't a criticism. This is like product. Oh. This is like critique hey, away. I'm critique see- away. Actually, it's not, even I think a, criti- it's not a criticism. It's like I'm just seeing. I'm getting this new set of questions in the last few right. months from a different population. Right. So, so let me respond in actually two different. I guess, frankly, oppositional. Not oppositional, but to, uh, and let me let me make a point, and then exactly the opposite point. This is this will seem weird, but I think it'll make sense as soon as I say it. So, the first part is I actually completely agree with you. Uh, adding more data about information, about what it means. I think a hover over is actually perfect, maybe with a little indicator that there is a place to hover over. 
But, um, you know, discoverability of what it means, I think, is helpful. There was also the goal of this green, yellow, red stuff, um, which even if you don't know what they are, if you see green, obviously, it's probably better. It's not just green. It's green and X. So even if you're colorblind, you can still see which ones are you know, either we don't know or that looks good or that looks not good. Uh, so that's a little bit of an effort towards that. But I yeah. actually completely agree with you. Having, you know, being able to hover or suck click or something else to explain not just what it's measuring, but why it's important, I think would be, that's great feedback. Hey, you know what? I can do something really clever and amazing. You can even watch me do it, wow. uh, which is, uh, I'm going to make a, a little of my note, note in, for each measure, uh, measurement shown have a hover or similar to explain the metric, why it's important, and pro I'm probably, and what the impact would be if it's not good. Is that fair? a fair statement? Yeah, that's the nice there are, summary. There, there may be. Amy, they're Amy. They're, they're <laughs> Amy yes, they're Amy uh, users who aren't as technical. Now, now that I've made that point, because I actually agree with you, you're going to have some users that are uh, uh, less technical. Um, I did learn um, earlier this year when I, I was invited to the White House. That was pretty cool. We didn't get to actually get in the White House. That was kind of a bummer. Thanks, COVID. Um, uh, <clears throat> but so you uh, you with know, them on Zoom? Sorry, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm sorry? So you were like in the White House on Zoom? Uh, yes. <laughs> You are exactly correct. <laughs> uh, Jim Zemlin flew out from California <laughs> to DC to be in an in-person meeting at the White House. And then after he arrived, they told him, nah, we take it back. Yeah. So that was kind yeah. of, that was kind of lame. All right, so, but, but, but here's the thing. In the preps for that meeting, uh, we met with some of the uh, support staff for the executive branch. I mean, I, I, just I, you know, get, bear in mind, David, this is being recorded in case there's anything you don't Oh, uh, no, no, no. This okay, is, there's right. nothing secret here. No, I, okay. I would not. Yeah. If, if there was something secret, I would not share it in this forum anyway. Yeah. Um, so, and by uh, the way, our intelligence on Ukraine. <laughs> actually, Ukraine did impede uh, follow on work because the US government and the EU, uh, AU, you know, basically many countries suddenly got involved in things that weren't open source with offer security. What, are, are we surprised? But getting back to my point, um, when we went to talk to several executive staff, uh, I was prepared to give the explanation of what's open source software and frankly, if necessary, what's software. Because in the past, I've had to do that. And I we went you. up and, and we, you know, but, you know, but um, when we went over and talked to some folks, we talked to some of the, one of the key shake you know, people who support staff, who really was under, who was clearly very heavily involved in this, you know, uh, I won't give this person's name, although you can find it on the internet. Basically, we're just, okay, you know, trying to figure out, okay, hey, tell us a little bit of your background. Well, I used to run the Chrome browser security group. I did not oh. know that about you. <laughs> okay, you know, instead of, hey, we have to explain software and open source software. Oh, no, they have, you know, now this doesn't mean that every single person in the executive branch is out there writing code every day. That's not what I'm claiming. But what I'm claiming is that over the last few decades, the expertise and knowledge in at least some parts of some governments um, has really increased over the years. And I think I can make a good case as why, which is increasingly the world's depending on automation. Automation depends on software. Software depends on open source software. That doesn't mean everybody gets it, but um, there are more people than you might think who have more knowledge than you might think in even upper echelons of uh, at least some governments. So, but that uh, having said all that, your statement about, hey, helping folks who are less familiar with this, great idea. And I think a hover over text or something similar is uh, probably the way to do there's that. There's also a really silly one, but I can't read all of the labels and hovering over them doesn't give me the full label. It's like the one next to that security where, I'm assuming it's just security awareness. 
That's right. Uh, but if you're, if you're looking at, like, I, I tr truncated it on my tiny window so I could do the side by side and explore. And do oh, it. okay. Yeah. I, um, all right. It's well, basically, what, what you're seeing, yeah, what you're seeing is a quick whip up using Grafana to yank in a whole bunch of data. Uh, but you're right. I mean, I mean, basically, um, this was a quick whip up. And um, the idea was basically, hey, can we come up with some? And I think the original notion was was that we were going to try to, you know, make adjustments and changes to this to kind of figure out what we're going, what we want. Mm -hmm. um, but after whipping this up, I think the realization was, oh, user interface is hard. Maybe we should pick it. Which I mean, no, that's actually not a surprise to anybody. Uh, maybe we should bring in some people where. Um, they've de they're willing to dedicate the time to it. It's not even so much that it couldn't be done. It's just it takes a lot of time. It's a so, different expertise than most people. It's a who different write expertise. Open, open source software. Yeah, well, it, it, it's a different expertise than many other developers have. But I would also argue that uh, that's that's true. But it's also just the time. The time to create a UI is much shorter than the time it is to create a good UI. <laughs> <laughs> And that's yeah. true, even if you are a UI UX expert. Okay? Any PeopleSoft user will tell you that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> are you giving counter examples? Yes, um, I am. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so basically, um, yeah. We so we haven't made commitments per se, but basically, uh, the folks who develop for the Linux Foundation LFX, they've got a lot of folks who are who have. Got spent lots of time and experience on user interfaces. The, the user uh, but they interface. don't know a lot about, but they don't know nearly as much about measuring security. No, so the, this is why right now we're com trying to combine the knowledge of different groups together. L LFX does provide a, a very, it, it's an excellent um, design. It's it's beautiful and usable. It's, Thank they you. Do, Thank they, you. They do do great UI work. No question. Thank you. And, and if you want to say, hey, it's not perfect. Yes, it's software. Nothing's perfect. But <laughs> right. I, I also agree with you that, you know, they've uh, a lot of their stuff has far better UI experiences than um, things you know, software Microsoft. engineers create. Yes, software engineers don't write good UIs. Well, it's, no, I, I would disagree. Not universally, you. but like, no, no. you know. Uh, here, here's the thing. I would include UI expertise as a subset of software engineers. I, I can help in software I, and you're an engineer. You're just I'm in a, you I'm a in different a specialty. Yeah, I'm in a computer science department where I teach. I am the only the only HCI knowledge that our graduates get is the one lecture that I give on it. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. That's yeah, I, took a, I took a whole class on it. Oh, me too. We, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it, uh, it, 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 I'll, I'll just observe that George Mason takes university takes user interfaces. No, it's series. we are on the we're <laughs> we're, we're in that, it's something I'm working to change, but it, it okay. We also are yeah. not uncommon. Uh, no, I think that's true too. So in any case, um, the my point here basically is. Yeah, I'm sure the actual metrics will change. Maybe presentation will change quite a bit. But the goal is to provide data to give, for example, I mean, here's some wrap-ups here. Um, you know, basically, uh, oh, I, th I think the problem here, okay, I know what the problem is here. It's okay, um, it's a mock-up. Yeah, it's a, it's a mock-up. And um, recently the scorecards folks changed the API to acquire their data. So mm -hmm. some of the data we have is no longer up to date for scorecards. Uh, haven't changed the badge API, so that one's still valid. Um, you know, and so basically what you're finding is, hey, Kubernetes is doing static analysis, but as far as we know, they're not doing dynamic analysis, and we don't know if they're requiring TO2FA. We just don't have that data. So, you know, and so, hey, that suggests to me that they're doing some things well. There's some areas to be either improved or we don't know, and maybe that's something to investigate further, Okay. Uh, but they do have a vulnerability reporting process. They certainly do. They have folks who know how to design. They've got lots of contributors. And it's been around long enough with lots of contributors uh, that it suggests that it's more likely to keep going. Absolutely, yeah. Um, There's like main... some implied sustainment metrics, but it's pretty light on those. Yeah, yeah. And, and to be fair, really the goal was primarily security-related metrics, mm -hmm. but... You know, 
a- a- acknowledging that other, the, I mean, there are things that aren't strictly security that I think are, are helpful indicators. Um, I would say sustainment being one and yeah. Kate will probably appreciate this, but licensing, not so much which license you choose, but that you choose a license and tell people what it is. There's a non-trivial number of people who think they're releasing open source software who have not put in a license. And therefore, from a legal point of view, um, it's way too dangerous. I mean, as far as the US, as far as most countries' law is concerned, you have not released open source software because it does not meet the requirements. So is that, a, is that a open SSF? concern licensing is that part of the um it it it, it is um but only because it's also a security concern here's the problem it's really sustainment argument if you don't put your license in you clearly aren't paying attention to the knitting as it were you Mm -hmm. don't you you have not checked you have not done the simple basics okay so that suggests two problems one if you can't figure out how to put a license statement in, you're probably not writing secure software either because you're not paying attention to the details that matter. Can I clarify Can something? Sh- so oh, yeah, so for, for example, Zephyr is sort of the epitome of licensing each file and making that clear. Most open source projects that I look at are not terribly good at licensing at the file level. How important is that from a security perspective? Um, okay, Kate's may disagree with me, but uh, I'm going to claim not. Okay, now, uh, for example, the best. With you. Oh my goodness! Oh, we will agree on something. Well, I mean, okay. Now, now to wait, be wait, fair, wait a minute. Is Kate agreeing or disagreeing? Kate will disagree with you here. Yeah, that's okay. Keep going. Go on. Okay. Keep going. So, so, so I, yeah. So, so let, let so let, let me um, add here. The best practices badge focuses on security. And it actually does include a requirement for per file licensing statements, but only at the gold level. And the rationale for that is the biggest problem is the ones who don't put licenses in at all. If there's no license statement about the software anywhere, then the default laws for your country kick in which in every country I'm aware of is not open source software. There, there may be a country somewhere, but I doubt it. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, if I post on the internet, laws don't apply. Uh, boy, are you gonna be surprised. <laughs> um, and so as a security indicator, the folks, there are a lot of folks who don't include licenses at the per file level. And I think Kate and I would strongly agree that it is much better if they do. But the thing that really worries me is the ones where there's no licenses at all. And yeah. that becomes not just a, hey, you're not doing as well as you should. You could do better. Like, but the li- no license at all means red flag. Um, you're not paying attention to the basics. And lots of other developers are not going to be willing to work with you. They're not going to be willing to contribute in particular. And that's just the license file really and the root of a repository that you're referring to there. That's right. That's right. Okay. Hey, do you, have, do you have a license file? I mean, technically you can, you can put in a readme, but I think it's a terrible idea because then it can't be found automatically. Put it in a license file, license dot something or license no extension. Mm-hmm. And now we, at least we know what the license is. It's really important to have a license. I mean, I'd say it's for some companies, it's a requirement to use entirely. Yes. So I think, I, it I, think it's, it's, I see that as like a high risk metric. I, I get that there's a security story, but if this is a risk dashboard overall, like I, I think that is. It, that it is really is focusing on security. It's yeah. really focused on security risk, but bleeding into other areas under the assumption and I think this is this is an assumption, but I think it's a fair one, that there what you're looking for is indicators. And while yeah. licensing technically isn't a security measurement directly, it's an indicator of failure to uh, pay attention and also a likelihood of causing systemic failure yeah. to the project. Well, and therefore here's, here's a security the problem. Point. Then we, mm-hmm. I don't know. Then I just feel like it has to be acknowledge that this is a security view of risk because i think from a company consumption perspective if they're weighing whether or not to use something i would say licensing risk might 
supersede it depending on what they're using. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, sure. I, I, I totally, totally valid point. Yeah, but this is a project of the Open Source Security Foundation. It literally has security in their name, so they're really focused on security. I, they, they now, now as far as the licensing goes, they actually do agree that licensing is a decent indicator. Um, it's it, it, and they they have a concise guide for evaluating open source software that they've released, and one of the points is licensing. You know, in particular, do they have a license statement at all or not? Because if they don't, oh my gosh. Now, I, I um, you know, I'll totally agree with Kate that uh, per file licensing is much better. Uh, big, big, but because so many projects don't do it, it's a little un, unfair. To, I don't want to say unfair, well, it's but not unfair. It, it's just immature. Image. Um, oh man, yeah. call them names. So, <laughs> How's this? It is less. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, it's a it prototype. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, but, um, no, but, but as far as the yeah. as far as the metric goes, uh, the one that worries us the most is no license at all. And then yes, they would be much better if they had per file. Um, you know, hey, the Linux kernel managed to get there, and it's huge. There's a lot of files it's not in quite there. there, but it's getting there. Well, okay, mo it's mostly there. I I'll say they're much further along the path than many projects. I have a another topic question here. Looking at it. Um, I noticed this seems to be more project operational versus individual version answers. Right. And I'm curious how you're going to handle versioning here, because when you're actually deciding whether or not you want to use a project, there's also the consideration of versioning and which packages are still supported by what. Funny you should mention that. That's actually a significant discussion on, on the dashboard thing. Um, uh, the and the, the reality is that some metrics are are per version, some are per project, some are even per organization because there's a number of organizations that have lots of projects, and really your metrics are against the whole org. Um, right now we're having arguments about that because uh, because uh, on the one hand I think everybody wants everything, and on the other hand there there is a need for a minimum viable product project. You know, it, 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 trying to do everything means you get nothing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it could be effective as a two tier. Like, I think looking at how a project is run year over right. year, version over version is also just an indicator of how mature this project is. And I think that's still a valid thing to measure and to track. But from a practical standpoint, if there's this, because it does seem like some of these metrics are tied to specific versions, then if below, like it could be like, I kind of visualize it, here's the project metrics and then right. version specific metrics where you could pick a version and then have it populate for that. And that way you're looking at it, the exact release you'd be using and there's no, cause I feel like I would hate to see someone use this. And then, I mean, you would hope they would recognize that different versions are in different places. But yeah, one, but, 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 but I, I, yeah, there, there's a decent counterpoint, which is there's already existing tools to take a component and a version number and figure out, hey, is it vulnerable or not? Yeah. So it's I mean, so it's not that I think it's very, very important, but it's not clear that we need to add to that space. Um, and in fact, uh, there, uh, Brian Fox had an interesting presentation. Kate, I don't know if you saw it, but I mean, it's, it's its own type of report. Um, you know, something like ninety-five point point five percent of the vulnerable components that they're finding um, are ac actually have a fixed version. If only they had uploaded up updated to the fixed version instead. Yeah, and some versions may have different licenses. That that's true. And and again, now the question is, I, I, and I think even at the file level, uh, right now we don't care what the license is. We just want to make sure that we know what it is and that's an open source license if you're claiming it's open source software. Uh, but, you know, like that we don't we don't have any negative feelings about the GPL. Um, yeah. you, if you're bringing in the Linux kernel, it's GPL version two. That's fine. It's very clearly stated overall. And certain fi uh, files actually have additional licenses. That's one of the fun things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and that's an advantage of doing per file. But um, the key thing really, I think, is it has a license at all. And I haven't seen what the numbers are now. I think it's gone down a little bit, but it's, I think it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. I've also seen like, I, for lack of a better term, S-bombs for licenses. 
uh, just in terms of like what's in us, not just listing out all the software components, but specifically just what all the licenses are within whatever you're using. I, I believe Kate can help you uh, identify an S bomb that can include licensing material. <laughs> Kate, that's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> I think she dropped on and off right when I mentioned S bomb. It was like a. Yeah. Anyway, Zoom, obviously, Zoom has been programmed to, um, you know, if you hear S bomb and it kicks the kid off Zoom. <laughs> yeah, but, but seriously, S SPDX has. has all sorts of goodness there yeah, really yeah it, it's it's got lots of goodness there uh, but for the security story we could certainly and and really for a legal analysis license compliance um you need more than green yellow red i think here i think uh, also but, what you're yeah. you're basically saying which would be mm -hmm. sophia we lost you oh i got muted by the host <laughs> um i was just gonna say I don't, again, don't want to over bloat this because I also completely understand you're trying to get something that's easy to use and to view, but be, to your point on, this is only going to cover that was my information. I would love to see a resource page because there are so many other places that you can get more detailed information when you do need to go uh, into versions. And so like versus bloating this dashboard, just say, hey, there are ahead. other things available to you and just point to them. Like it's super simple and it can be, can be crowdsourced and updated. So like, I would love to, like, I don't know. Again, I don't know what this is gonna look like. It seems right. extra, but I would love to see that. All right, so I'm gonna add that right now to my thoughts page. Include hyperlinks to where to get more information uh, where available. All right, done. This, totally to agree. Down the, the bloat, because I think there's always gonna be people that are like, what about this other thing? What about like, I wanna keep doing to you right now, but saying like, we have great other tools for this. So let's just say what this does and make sure that those tools are discoverable so that you're not, you're not bloating. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is gonna replace Grimoire Labs, for example. I mean, this is, you know, this is trying to give that higher level view of somebody who has a few minutes to spend. Um, and, uh, you know, linking off to things that give you more information, I think is a great idea. Uh, you know, try, trying to fill in somewhere in that in the middle of, you know, something super short, but very, very little detail, something super detailed, but you really need to understand what you're doing. This is the, I think the goal is somewhere in between. Um, there's one more just question in terms of interpretation, how are the recorded slash time stamp time periods, like how is that determined for the output? Uh, well, all right, the dashboard itself doesn't exist. Um, I think, you know, but the, for the prototype, yeah, for the prototype, uh, I think you can actually ask for that data as a JSON file. I, I stopped sharing, okay. but I guess I could go back and share again. Um, where, I just whoops. I don't know. I, I feel like there's again a, a huge proliferation of dashboards. So I, I like to see time periods very upfront and center, just so like when people are looking at it, they know when this was taken. Because if it's a snapshot from last year, maybe maybe we need to look again, kind of thing. Um, or like yeah, I I, I I um I would expect it to be updated on a weekly or daily basis, and not okay. not not a uh a, 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 it could in theory do an instantaneous, but then cache it. But I, I, I think we're gonna want to have not old for that very reason. Agreed, oh, wait yeah. a minute. Hey, look, I, I, I have an answer for you. Are you ready for me to share my screen again? All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. And if you look over on the right, we have a recorded and the date it was recorded. Well, that's what I was asking because I saw one was from 2017 and one was Monday. Yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, I think the recording here, it's not when it was acquired. This is when it acquired a passing badge from the OpenSSF Best Practices badge program. And uh, that's a little bit of a mislead because uh, when the bad Best Practices badge program was created, uh, we actually worked with um, a couple projects that we were thought of as North Stars. You know, basically, hey, we need to be able to handle projects like this. And so we interacted with the Linux kernel, Kubernetes, curl, a couple other projects like that to basically, you know, kind of make sure, you know, hey, you've a lot, you know, 
we want to make sure the badging process appropriately handles your kind of project. So, uh, so they were one of the first out of the gate mm-hmm. um, with with a badge uh, because they'd been involved with the whole process. <laughs> If I do, recall do we, correctly, do you have to re up your badge at a certain point, or is that just one point? Yeah, it, 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 um, it will expire, like, um, not so much expire, so much as if um, you've changed sites and things like that, it will fail. There's an automatic scanning going on for some of the properties, okay. but, but not for that's... but not for many. Um, and so it's something we'd like to improve. It caught us, it caught Zephyr. It caught you. <laughs> We yeah, but, but we stopped, we, stopped, we stopped passing, and then we started taking it seriously when they actually failed us. <laughs> well, but okay. you know what? It, and Zephyr's an awesome shape. It's one of the few gold gold badges. Um, we, so. we got there before Linux did, actually. You did. You did. Good for you. Shame on shame on Linux kernel. No, I don't think. You know, yeah, congratulations to everybody who's getting a badge. Really. So, right. um, but uh, but but yeah. So there's some automation. Um, if you look at the best practices badge, though, it's very project oriented, not version oriented. Okay. So it's very much is focused on things like, do you have static analysis tools? You know, do you have, do you, are you using strong crypto in various ways? You know, do your people know how to develop secure software? Do you have 2FA tokens? And it's the sort of thing that once you get, it's, I mean, it's possible to lose, but most of those are sustained. Once you get to that point, they tend to sustain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and that's my intent because, of course, you know, real realistically, most software that's constantly coming out with new versions, and we don't want to have to. You, know, you you want to make sure that they can be agile and keep making new versions and not have to fill in yeah. forms. Well, stuff. I think that's also like helping to affirm that this is really focused at the project level and not the version level. So just as long as it's that's clear. Right. That's right. This one is. Yeah, this one is very much focused at the project level. Um, whether or not the 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 uh, the next iteration, as you will, or you know, or the, uh, the 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 official dashboard first version will, I don't know. Is that that's one of the arguments? I think it would be okay for it not to have per version. So because I mean, if for the per version da- for, not the per version, not the for the data for a version, there's already a lot of tools that will tell you, hey, you're behind. Go update. Mm-hmm. And that I think for a lot of folks is the key measurement is, are you, is this known vulnerable or not? And if it's known vulnerable, well, go, go update. And you don't, you don't need this dashboard to tell you that. All right. I guess I will stop sharing again. All right. So I, we sort of had the date, but not exactly what you're looking for. This is a really exciting start though. It's, I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to, we're running out of time. So I guess I'm going to appeal to everybody here, um, which is, you know, the, there's still decisions to be made in terms of which metrics. I mean, I, we, we showed this this quick, quick thing, but I think the argument now is trying to figure out which, me, you know, there are many ways you can measure stuff, which metrics matter um, that impact security. And obviously it doesn't have to be uh, direct, it can be an indirect indicator. Uh, indeed, they're all indirect indicators right now. Nothing, nobody has a way of, ma- of sending software in and t- t- telling you how many pounds of security it is. We don't have that. We've been looking for decades, but we have some decent indirect measures. And uh, so let's uh, try to figure out the best ones. I'm just it. internalizing all of these. <laughs> okay, and Sean ran away. He had a class, I think. Uh, okay, so uh, Sophia, are you now Lee? Who, who's who's uh, who's host? I think hosting? you are. I think you're My the host? host. Yeah. I think I. I don't know. I think you're the host, but uh, it, it, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay, so maybe I should just ask: Is there any? I, I think we're at time. So, is there anything else that we need to deal with uh, in these uh, last few seconds? I mean, I basically was just trying to do this, but it was, it was interesting to spend time at the dashboard and look at the other metrics that we have in our extended list and just see if there's any other that I think, again, knowing that it is focused on security, because I do know in some of the initial right. conversations, there was sort of this, how much do we want to look more broadly at risk versus just security? Um, knowing that this is focused more on security, are there, are there any other things that should be a part of that high level view? And so I think 
I'm happy to spend a little bit of time offline to look at that because I know you have a meeting tomorrow. So I right. can take that as homework before that meeting if I have any others to add based on that. But I think like, please, I, I generally like that you've built off of existing programs and tooling because those are already accepted things that people might be using already versus like, right. here's another set of metrics, like, or at least connecting them to that. Well, I, I, I don't think we're, we're not violently opposed to a, a whole new metric or a few whole new metrics if they add value. So, but, but I, I think the, the goal here is not to present someone with a thousand metrics. That's yeah. not the goal. The goal is try, trying to come up with that somewhere between, it's not just one measure metric, not a million. It's a relatively small set where I can get a quick, you know, cause no one number captures everything. Yeah. But uh, I think they're, they were more in the list. Like, I feel like looking at this, I, the big ones that are missing to me is that I think we're in that big list that you had drafted where okay. like the mean time to response rates or bug fix rates and right. not all, like we already talked about this, not all security vulnerabilities are tagged or exposed. So looking at resolution rates around security issues specifically is sometimes untenable, but we could look at bug and fix and responsivity around bugs and issues um, mm -hmm. as a way to indicate not just is this being maintained, but is this actively are we actively responding quickly when there is an issue? Um, or even just, are, like, is, are, are, there, are there updates at all? You know, it, you know when's the last yeah. time you released? If, they, if it tends you, to release you, you every five years. You have an active metric. You have, did this get any active yeah. commits as part of scorecard, but it doesn't have any sort of responsivity rate. It's just, right. is it active? And that could be like all commits on documentation. You actually don't know what the commits are for. So that's just one right. thought. Um, yep. But again, yep. there's, there's always more metrics. Exactly. And so, so th basically we're out right now appealing to, for, for, you know, for those of you like you, Sophia and, and uh, well, everybody here, uh, basically there's lots of metrics of the ones that people have, have dreamt up, which ones are seem most useful in terms of raising up and showing on a dashboard to help people make those. I need to make a decision. I have more than two seconds. I don't have a year. <laughs> Um, well, thanks for sharing this. I appreciate the time. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye.